All right, boys, we're live. Happy that we're doing this. Um, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. You know, we're kind of starting our own podcast here, here at BY Performance. Just want to introduce myself. I'm Bobby Wall, uh, Director of Baseball Operations here. Took this job, I don't know, six months ago or so, right before the offseason kind of kicked off for a lot of our pro guys, our college guys. And, you know, my task was to try to get together, you know, the, the programming and all this stuff to try to organize just how we did an off season. And was really excited to do that, see a lot of guys develop and get better. But yeah, I, I played for a while, played uh, for a few years professionally, uh, have some time in the big leagues. So was happy to kind of bring some of that expertise and knowledge to what I do here. And I'm, and I'm joined by people that are a lot smarter than me, which I love. You know, Chris Patton, our lead uh, biomechanist here at BY. Guy's an absolute genius. Um, I learned a lot from him, and I, and I continue to learn a lot from him. And uh, I'm also here with Matt D., our strength guy. Guy's a legend. Does a lot of great work with our guys as far as putting together programming for a whole entire offseason. You know, the proper phasing that I think is super important that is very overlooked in the world of development and baseball, baseball development. So really happy to be joined by these boys. So, guys, thank you uh, for coming on. Of course, man. Thanks for having us. Uh, of course, dude. All right, Chris, who are you, man? What do you got for the boys? So, Chris Patton, um, I'm the Director of Player Development here. All right, so when I first joined here, I was an aspiring physical therapist. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to PT school and then join all the PTs here and, and continue to work with athletes, especially baseball players. But as I was working here, I was given the ability to fall under Brandon's wing and learned a lot about pitching biomechanics and honestly fell more in love with that than anything. I had a lot of success at the beginning, getting guys right, fixing mechanics and seeing huge velo jumps. And then from there, I actually got into PT school, but enjoyed this so much that I decided to continue to follow this route. Lucky to have you, kid. That's huge. I mean, to have that opportunity to do that and then to forego it, to, to follow what you do and what you love, man. Like, I think a lot of people can take a lot of learning from that. You know, a lot of people just kind of find a job and they're like, okay, I'm good to just be here and sit here and collect a paycheck. But when you find something that you're passionate about, do it. You know, so I think that's pretty sick, man. There's not a lot of people like that. Matt D, what do you got? You know, I've been here a little bit longer than you, still relatively new. I've been here about uh, a year now, and, you know, I'm I'm in charge of the strength side of the performance coach here, so with all the the guys coming in, like with the pro off season, you know, we did the did the strength assessment, kind of put together their programming, you tried making it as unique to each person, but, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm kind of, I kind of get that side of it, so once you guys relay over to me I kind of take it and run with that so yeah cool I think that's been one of the biggest growths that we've seen over the past few years I mean when I first started really the <clears throat> only thing we were doing were one-on-one -on -one biomechanical sessions it was you come in you throw a bullpen you do a couple of drills to try to fix each change you go on about that throughout the week and and continue to try to fix that throughout the drills but now i think adding you bobby with the the pitch design and and all the other stuff to help program guys and and make these changes along with the strength aspect aspect of things i think it's helped grow yeah this place a lot yeah and i think that's kind of the the evolution of this place man where like like you just said you know a lot of it was kind of that individual biomechanical sessions that we used to do and have and we still have and i think those are still a huge part of this place that not a lot of people have is that one-on-one -on -one connection with the athlete that you get to form a relationship not only when you're you know you're learning things but as a person right like i think a lot of these some of these places that people go to it you get kind of lost in the weeds and that's the really unique part about this place is like you feel very very i don't think special is the right word but you feel like you're important part of something you, yeah you're part of something and like not just a group yeah and uh, look we have that and i think that there's a time and place for that and that's that's great but when you have like a one-on-one -on -one connection with somebody i don't know i think that's just so important that you know kind of gets lost in this whole thing but i think today is gonna be like let's talk about the off season what we were able to do, what we were able to accomplish, some of our favorite moments from it, some of our favorite guys, just some of the big changes that we made for guys. Like we're seeing a lot of guys at spring training right now that I didn't think I'd, you know, I've, I'm done playing and I didn't think I'd follow it as much, but I think I follow it more now than I did even when I was playing. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I, I care so much mm -hmm. about what these dudes are doing. And it's really cool to see a lot of the success. Basically, you know, I'm gonna have Chris run into this too a little bit, but like, how are we running off season here for our pro guys is you come in for the in-house and we're going to put you through our assessment and i think again kind of the great thing about this place is we have pts on staff i don't know how, how many pts do we have four yeah. in-house we have four pts which like 
as an athlete, especially when you get to higher levels, like you just want to stay healthy, you know? So when we have that, if, uh, like I said, four PTs on staff, they're going to run you through a assessment, you know, mobility, stability, you name it. Going to get a lot of good information from that. We're going to run you through a pitch design assessment as well. Going to learn a lot about your arsenal. We got Joey on staff. Oh yeah. And then, but Joey, like we're going to, he's our connect the dots guy, right? We're going to get the data from our 3D assessment, our force place, force plate assessment, sorry. And we're going to get literally every bit of information you can't hide from that thing what you basically do is you get down to your underwear and we put dots on you and you throw a bullpen and it's going to feel very uncomfortable at first but the data that we get kind of outweighs that comfort and allows us to really get a good picture of how you're moving so we're going to do that and then we're going to run you through our uh, strength assessment with matt d over there we're going to learn a lot about your strength where you're weak where you're strong you know your rotational power and we got the proteus here literally every piece of equipment you can imagine we got it to be able to kind of give the best off-season plan for you as an individual so yeah that's kind of how that runs down. So then, you know, what we do from that, all the information that we get from those things is we put together an individualized plan and we kind of attack the off season forever, how long you're here. Some guys is a little bit longer, like if you're going to big league camp or if you're going to minor league camp or indie ball guys, you know, it's going to be different. But yeah. I to build on that, I would like to say like when you're working with pro or collegiate athletes, you really got to get to the nitty gritty. You got to figure out because these guys have been doing things well for a long time now um, and what they do is very unique. So having the 3d having the force plates really just gets that you, you get that extra confidence in, in what you need to do and what you need to help that person develop yeah yeah and I, but i think with all the the ways we have to measure everything like not much is really gonna be able to slip through the cracks you know we have like you said the pt so yeah. we have that we have the 3d the proteus like you said there we need to get to the nitty-gritty so yeah we have everything we can need here to be able to measure that and get them better essentially. Matt, like what did you learn, you know, about yourself, I guess this this first off season for you, working with a lot of these guys, you know, what did you learn about yourself? What did you learn about programming? What did you learn about the weight room? Like what did you take away from this these past you know, six months? I would definitely say, you know, each person's unique. We knew that coming in, but you you need to have that unique relationship ship with each of them. Some of them kinda, you know, like putting their head down and just get after it some of them like you know just coming here for a purpose where not saying they're not purpose but like they want to come here interact you know have some bonding kind of this is their off season they like to kind of be able to not have that everyday stress on them i'm sure i'm sure yeah. that you're like that yeah, yeah um for sure you I know mean, each person's different and you know when it comes to programming you have to program that same way you know yeah. it's, there's the general the outline but you gotta adjust that to each person as well and everybody has setbacks sometimes you just gotta go with with what happens and yeah it's tough like i feel like i mean i don't know about you but when like somebody has a setback mm -hmm. you know i feel like responsible for that at times you know like i think yeah. you know that's just that that relationship that you bring in to these guys is like you you feel for them like when they're going through something it feels like almost like you're going through something yeah and that's that's been a challenge at least for me and i, I don't know about you guys but like if somebody like comes up like oh you know i was this happens, you know, it sucks. It, you take that home with you almost sometimes, you know? Yeah. I think a common misconception for me is thinking that these guys know more than they really do. So like first working with you, Bobby, and, and, and Ryan was one of our other first pro athletes. Like I felt like I had to be creative, like way more creative than I already was. It was hard to kind of step out into that or step out of my box and be comfortable showing you guys things that you needed to do because again, I thought you had already went through some of that stuff being at the highest level when in reality there's a lot of things that you guys really didn't know or don't know yet and it's it's <clears> fine <throat> to give that advice or or show you guys what needs to yeah. I, be done i don't think a lot of people realize man like just because you get to a high level or just because like you get to d1 or you get to you know pro ball or you get to the big leagues like that doesn't mean you're getting the best coaching out there you know and i think that's like you said it's a, a huge misconception is like oh, I'm going to go to this place and my coaching is going to improve dramatically. That's not always the case. Like, so many people think, oh, I'm in the big leagues, I'm good, I'm done, I'm done developing, like I'm done learning about myself or my arsenal or whatever it may be, and it's, and it's the farthest thing from the truth. Um, and I, I would agree with what Chris said. I kind of had that same, that same feeling at first where it's like, okay, these guys, they know what they're doing, but, you know, they even need with, that guidance. Yeah, they even really with that, I mean, that's that's why they're here, and that's something that I learned this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And that, 
again, like just because you're strong doesn't mean you know what you're doing in the weight room. It doesn't mean you're doing the right plan for you in, in order to throw a baseball 100 miles an hour or to get guys out in the big leagues. It's just not the case. So when people realize that and learn that, and I think it's pretty cool. But yeah, I think, you know, from my point, my favorite part of this offseason was at least selfishly for me was like learning how to improve guys arsenal because i think especially in the pro level that's the biggest thing that i think these guys need obviously like how you move sometimes is going to be how you move and, and there's some changes you can make but they're so minuscule and there's they're very hard to make especially when, if you've been throwing a certain way for 25 years and again there's things to do uh, improve in the weight room you know your mobility routine whatever it may be but I think when you're improving a guy's arsenal, you're directly improving their performance. Like you're directly improving how they're getting guys out, you know, and, and how they're attacking guys. Yeah. Um, Cause at the end of the day, like that's your profession, you know? And, and I don't know, I, to see what we did with Ryan this off season, right? And I know it's pretty early in spring training, but the kid's having a lot of success. You know, he struggled a little bit with some um, some arsenal issues, I guess. You know, was trying to do things that he probably wasn't the best at. You know, that was when he, when he got here this offseason, that was kind of our first discussion was like, hey, man, didn't work for you. This is why. Here's why we're going to go into, like, that seam shifted wake two seam. Um, we're going to go in that slider, that sweeper that's so big now and kind of try to maximize his cutter. Really supinated, dominant guy. And we were able to identify that through, you know, all of our, our cameras and all those other things. And I really like that we found that because it allowed him to be him and like not try to force something. Yeah. Well, in previous years too, in the off season for Ryan, like his goal was he needed to throw harder. I mean, when he first showed up, he was probably sitting 89 91 topping a three or a four every now and again yeah. generally sitting 89 91 92 so seeing his mechanical flaws or deficits and getting those right were kind of the focus in the past few off season so it was perfect timing for you to get here because he kind of already had most of that ironed out and it was time for him to not just sling the piss out of it but yeah let's get guys out more and let's let's make that next level so. yeah and some like background like you know he was trying to force a carry four seamer and like he was able to do it every now and again and it was just wasn't consistent you know like there'd be one where he'd clip an 18 but never really had a consistent breaking yeah. ball cutter yeah. was always really good yep. but never paired well with yeah everything else so. and i think that you're what you're seeing now is he's having some success in spring training is just understanding like what he's good at and he's able to do it and kind of like not think about it or not be out there actively trying to carry a four seam fastball he's just allowing his arsenal to work which like i said now is that sinker slider mix and um i shoot he's been up to seven i think already well and that's the other thing is when you're so mechanically driven at the beginning phase of your training or trying to get better performance wise like that's a big thing in the back of your head, I feel like. And it's really hard to turn that off as much as you try. When you get in that competitive state, it's really hard to yeah. lock in and focus and, and really go for the task at hand, which is get the guy out. Yeah, so. yeah. And I, I don't want to call you out, Ryan. Like, I feel bad saying this. But, like, when I, when I first saw him throw and, like, how he was so mechanically driven. And, like, look, it worked. But he was basically, like, throwing his pelvis just open and it was the weirdest looking thing but again he threw 95 doing it and it was like you know it was it was strange to say the least but it worked and he was throwing hard and I think now kind of what we were able to do just from the mechanical side and Chris you can speak to this more but like we were able to implement a lot of drills to kind of smooth smoothen a word yeah smoothen a word yeah, yeah smoothen you know his his pelvis out basically so he's not just actively throwing it and kind of just create a little bit more tension in that load loading the pelvis correctly and i think that was a that was cool to me too just kind of still talking about ryan like i remember one day we were doing i don't even remember we kind of made up a drill for him i think it was because like we were doing some kind of standard drill whether i don't know if it was a janitor or what but then he felt something like he felt, he's like oh dude that kind of felt like an unlock and we're like what was it He's like, I don't know, I just felt like my pelvis kind of like loaded and I was like in my back hip more. And so we kind of like talked about it. We kind of came up with his own little unique drill that we made up for him. And his pelvis started moving actually normal yeah. and it looked pretty sick. So we kind of stuck with that. And I think that was a pretty cool moment for me just to like almost see the light bulb like, oh, that worked. Yeah. So I, I don't know, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it was an obvious unlock. His first bullpen out, 
top 97. Yeah, that was sick, inside, dude. So. That was sick, like, because that was, what, December? Yeah. And he was, like, just casually sitting 94, and we are all like, this might be a little too early for this. <laughs> and then and Brian being as competitive as, as hell, basically, like, he's like, last pitch, and let a 97 go at, yeah. I think it was, like, 7 vert, and or 9, 8 vert, and, like, 16 on horizontal. Yeah, and I've seen him. I've seen him hit 96 in a 3D, but that was juices flowing, absolutely locked in, like screaming and yeah, that and was pounding his chest. So like seeing that 97 as effortlessly as it was, like that was fun to watch. Yeah, like what Matt, like talking still going on about Ryan, mm-hmm. like in the weight room, how were we able to kind of like like those unlocks we were talking about? How did we kind of I don't know collaborate and how were we able to kind of blend? you know, those type of things into his training in the weight room as well. Like, what were you able to do with him? So, I mean, with him, he was he was definitely, he knew, you know, he knows what he needs. He knows what he wants. You said he was mechanical driven. Mm-hmm. Kind of similar sense in the weight room. He's always looking to one-up it. How can we get this better? You know, I like this drill. It was a, definitely a building block with him where we kind of, you know, got back into it just as we would anybody. But yeah. He was always looking, okay, how can we improve this? And I mean, we'd bounce ideas off each other. And, you know, if you liked it, like, you know, we ran with it because it was helping him. And mm-hmm. and he would be, he was a guy who'd be straight up, you know, like, I don't think this is working. You know, I'm not liking this. And, you know, sometimes we kind of hit that. But I think with him, it was definitely, it was easy to communicate with him about, you know, all right, I, I need to get better at this. And it kind of goes back to all of us being, being here, like, together. You know, not just us, but, like, the PTs as well. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, okay, he's not necessarily him but like if people get tight in one area i can okay how can we change this if sure. something's hurting but uh but as far as him yeah we definitely kind of brought all of our information together and i mean he knew what he needed to work on from where you guys helped him and then we just kind of it would be a back and forth with us yeah yeah and i think kind of what you're saying man like, like what makes this place special too is none of us go into what we're doing as far as programming or like okay you're doing this 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 and that's final you have no say at the end of the day it's their bodies yeah it's you know they're 25 plus years old they have a pretty good understanding of what they like and what they don't like and i can't actively feel what Mm -hmm. athlete one is feeling it's a it's it's a constant collaborative effort that all of us make you know whether that be in the weight room pitch design biomechanics pt you know all of us are in constant communication with everyone including the athlete and we are literally listening to everything they say and try to analyze all of what they're saying for us to kind of come up with the best plan for them and i think that is one of the most difficult parts is you have to give it time enough to trust the process right say there's Mm -hmm. a certain drill or something that may feel a little awkward or funny at first but us having the experience that we have we've seen these things work and again just because it worked with one or five people doesn't mean it's going to work with this next guy but again you have to give it time enough to be able to allow the athlete to fill it out and see what changes it brings upon i mean if you're doing it for months and you still haven't seen reaped any benefits from it then yeah maybe you should Mm -hmm. check the next alternate but and that's developing i think the player development as a whole is like a lot of guys are so quick you know and there's there's two sides of that like you're saying like so many guys are so quick to be like nope that feels like crap yeah. i'm done I'm not there's doing that, that comfortability again. aspect yeah. but again i mean you also if you want to get better you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable and i think 100%. that's one of the things that i really enjoyed with the guys this off season is they were able to buy into that but they were also grown and mature enough to be able to tell us hey not really a huge fan of this can we try something different and we would find an alternate to it and still try to yeah. have the sim- similar goal and and try to change the movements as, as yeah needed. and with what you're saying about you know trust in the process ryan was a guy like bobby said he's a competitor he wants to keep getting better he wants to get stronger move that weight around and you know sometimes i kind of had to you know talk to him like hey you know we're building there right now we need to get that muscle first before we're getting moving quick because you know we we got on the proteus here and everybody wants to set records be the best on it but you know if we're in that strength phase we're just building it i'm not expecting his acceleration to be the top right now and he was the guy i had to kind of all right let's let's take it back a step let's you know what are we doing right now why do Mm -hmm. we need to and that's knowing them as an individual yeah yeah. you know like everyone's gonna be so different and that was (laughs) talking about that like we had our weekly challenges right to see how competitive those guys got like during that well these guys got close really quick they did so it was a really good group yeah it was a lot of guys already knew each other for the most part but most guys i mean never met each other before some guys have trained together but i mean like 
seeing them actually go head to head and, and, and try to beat each other was fun because it was always there's still that relationship but they wanted to they wanted yeah. to crush each other. Like. And I think too like what was so cool about that was like we have guys that pitch in the big leagues we have guys that are super close to pitching in the big leagues we have guys that just got drafted we have guys in any ball we have guys that haven't even played professional baseball but are free agents and like they all got along you know what I mean they all had that common goal of what they were trying to accomplish and there was no like I don't know there wasn't like oh I'm better than you because I pitched at this level yeah um, we didn't have many egos which was no. nice which is going to run through the sport I mean it's it's all over business wise athletes I mean it's yeah. it's all over so but I'm glad that we were able to stay away from that yeah man it was I had a lot of fun you know even thinking about guys like Zach Venero right probably one of my favorites to work with this offseason just because of the opportunity he has and what he's come from I mean he was an indie ball guy wasn't drafted and now he's been up to triple a knocking on the door and I mean up to 100 I think he was up to 98 something in here wasn't he some of the changes we made with him I'm really excited about I think what most impressed me about Zach was like his ability to understand that it's more important to like be able to go out there and throw 97 every day than it is to hit 100 once and then yep. then hit 93, 94 the next time out. Well, those are those ones. I mean, you got a guy that's hit 100. You, especially for me, like not working with a ton of pro athletes in the past, like that's a guy you, you feel like you can't touch. Yeah, You know what I mean? And, like, having the 3D and having all the data really gives you, like I said, that confidence to be able to know what you need to attack. And, and again, with Zach, that's another guy. Like, if I was throwing 100, like, I probably wouldn't listen to many people. Uh, I'd feel like I already had it all figured out. Yeah, right? why would but you? Zach was never like that. Like, Zach came in every day, wanted to learn. Like, he did – everything we gave him program wise and he attacked yeah. it and he's had one of the best springs he's had i mean yeah. he's sitting 98 97 98 and he's never done that before in the brewers organization so yeah and he's i mean yeah, he's got awesome. a, yeah he's i think he was telling me like that's some of, this is the hardest he's sat in all of his outings yeah. in anything it, you know his whole entire professional career which again to me is sick because you see big league relievers not a lot of guys go out throw 98 and then have a day off and then come back and then are throwing 93 you know what I mean the guys that are really good know their delivery know how to be efficient within that delivery and do it, do every, it every single time yeah. out and I think that's a lost art and that's what's so cool about having the 3d is like we can we can literally formulate a plan to do that and like to know your best delivery and to be consistent with it well consistency for him is extremely important I mean he gave me a stat that he had like the most looks like guys just did not want to swing the bat at, for, against him last year so it's I mean, terrifying like, at bat I had to yeah I mean I yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean I probably wouldn't either but it's it's one of those things like your stuff is so good just be as and filthy as you can in attack like yeah yeah, I'm I excited think, for him, man. I think that's what Zach took most out of this offseason, too, just being able to learn more, not necessarily... Be consistent you know, like, and repeat. Yeah. I think that was Because, I mean, him. he was listening when, when we were talking. He never, yeah. like, tried to be like, oh, this doesn't work. Like, like you know, he you say he hits 100. Like, obviously, he's gifted there, but he was, he was always so open to just sitting back and listening, okay, why is this working? You know, and he was definitely one of the better ones when it came to that, just so retentive this offseason. Yeah. And, like, what were some of the big mechanical changes you identified, Chris, with him? I know we talked about, like, his arm. You know, we have a term, arm trail here. You know, it wasn't, you know, the guy was throwing hard, but he wasn't even maximizing, basically, his, his yeah, upper I think, half, you know? I think for him, beginning of the off season, especially during his, like, shutdown period, we really focused heavily on the hinge, mm -hmm. staying in the back hip a little yeah. bit longer. That's So, for him, it was more so just him flying out with the front side, and that caused him to come mm -hmm. out of scap retraction or shoulder horizontal abduction a little early, so the arm didn't trail as well as it could have, and that just led to him being inconsistent timing-wise. And a lot of times when you see inconsistencies, you see, with timing, you see those inconsistencies in command, you see the inconsistencies with Velo. Mm -hmm. So, beginning of the off season, I think we we made a huge effort of getting the back hip, we did creating that for more so tension. Long, I yeah, feel like. and then as he got into his build up and his ramp up, we started attacking. He had a little bit of a stabby arm action, just working on the fluidity and, and keeping that arm a little more compact. Which again, just going to help with the timing, not letting the arm escape and, and get up too early or start pulling yeah. too early. But again, really the biggest focus for him was trying to sync up his upper half with his lower half and, 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 and get that to be as consistent. It's not going to be the same every time, but no. as close to the same When you're throwing that possible. hard and moving that fast, it's, 
it's damn near impossible to be perfect every single time, but yeah. we can do our best to try to make it perfect every yeah. single time. Because he would have some reps where it was really good, and then the next one he was yanking and he was mm -hmm. chest towards the plate by the time the front foot got into place. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's finding the ability to be yeah. on time and, and be on time as consistently as possible. And to Zach's credit, like, that didn't deter him at all. You know what I mean? Like, he was very convicted in what we were telling him and what we – we're trying to kind of get what the point was we were trying to get across and he understood that and I think he was okay with it not oh, yeah. going perfect right away and again kind of going back to what we talked about earlier like that's the mark to me of like someone that's going to be successful yeah. it's like okay I'm okay with failing and I'm okay with trying this and I'm okay with looking like an idiot but I'll be damned if I'm not going to be able to do it yeah. you know what I mean and yeah. I think that was really cool about Zach and again probably one of my favorite things about this off season was to see not only him but all these other guys, right? Like DC and David and uh, Max and everybody. I mean, just the way that they were able to just take the knowledge that we were giving them, be okay with looking stupid and say, all right, all the chips are on the table. Let's have fun and see what happens. Yep. Um, so I thought that was really cool. And um, I want to shift a little bit though. I want to talk a little bit more about the weight room because I think that's such an important part about player development, Matt. What, how did we kind of go about this off season as far as like programming for them in the weight room like what what was the timeline like yeah so what what what, what phasing did we do you know all that stuff like mm -hmm. uh, tell the people the first week was probably a little just uh, a little over the top so you know we hit them with all the tests we got the pts to check their mobility we did a strength assessment we did a 3d um, you guys did pitch design and from all that that's where I got you know most of my information right up front that first week and uh, I kind of sat down with them talked to them a little bit just kind of got a feel for you know how their past off seasons gone because they've done this for years now mm -hmm. what'd you like what didn't you like and you know with most of them they were open to just about anything a couple guys different things here and there like uh i know stumpo he's he likes moving all throughout the offseason not just you know shout out to mitchell stumpo yeah. in the world baseball classic for team italy right now <laughs> one of the best dudes you can have what in a facility an absolute view <laughs> and glue guy of a man. human mitchell stumpo is i mean Literally, I wish I was in the clubhouse with that guy. He is the most fun person to be around. Sorry to cut you off no, about definitely. that, Matty, but like, this is a very important thing for me. Because I think being clubhouse guys and being like guys that you want to be around is so important, especially in baseball when you're playing 162 games. When you can have that type of personality in an environment, it changes how everybody thinks. Oh, yeah. It changes 100%. how everybody goes about their day. Like he comes in, and brightens up your day, puts a smile on your face, and you're excited to come to work. You know and when I mean? it, when he gets after, it, he gets after it. I oh mean, my there's god, there's no denying dude. that. I mean, the dude the guy's is jacked. Yeah, I mean, he, absolutely <laughs> jacked. You kidding me? I mean, he brought that. I mean, every day he was in, he brought that to the weight room too. And yeah, I mean, everybody knew when he was here. You definitely oh, yeah, know there when was here. no denying Mitchell Stumpo's presence. <laughs> And I guess Mitch took a lot of vacation days, but when he was here, he was <laughs> well, he had a lot going on. Blast. He was in Italy. Yeah. He was doing all this stuff for the World Baseball Classic. Shout out to him too. First big league camp this year, which was a big moment. Got engaged too. I mean, this kid had a huge year. Yeah, what I mean, an awesome my God. for a kid. So you know, he's gonna make his big league debut hopefully at some point this year. So Stumps, we love you, brother. A lot of firsts this year for those guys. I mean, a lot. Zach's first big league camp, correct? Well, he was, so he was backing up a lot. He's been backing up a lot. Uh, I think here he has a couple outings in Big League camp. I think he's, the first one went pretty good. I think he struck out a couple guys, maybe give up a hit. And then the last one, he came in for a hitter and punched him out on four pitches. And then I saw his last live BP, punched out two, gave two weak ground ball outs. Like the kid's shoving. So all those boys are in a really good spot. You know, Ryan was our dog of the week. New thing we're doing here. I think his last two outings, he's got three innings, six punch outs. You know, I think maybe a walk or in a couple hits here and there, but the boys are doing great. But anyways, Matt, sorry. We had no, Mitch Stumpo had to, had to be talking about. <laughs> his presence needed to be addressed. So what do you, as far as like how we went about the off season, yeah. that's where we were. So the general phasing for just about everybody, you know, they, they just come off their season, however long it was, but obviously, you know, they had a little bit of a break. What you guys take about like two weeks usually kind mm -hmm. of to yourself and then get back after it. So, uh, that first phase is more just getting them back, you know, back used to moving some weight around. Nothing, nothing crazy, but just kind of building that base, uh, building that foundation. So that way when we move forward, we have that kind of already set. So phase one, I would say that, uh, reconditioning phase, uh, after that, it's more just, you know, we want to build that muscle that we're going to have to, that we're going to need throughout the whole season. Mm -hmm. and you're, obviously they're not going to be able to move the same way. So 
we got to build as much muscle as we can now with while keeping them functional. So more of a hypertrophy phase there, kind of get them back on the right track. And then after that, once they kind of have that muscle, we wanted to get them moving that quicker, transitioning, you know, that's past that halfway point of the their off season. Yeah, like I, going back to the hypertrophy stuff, like mm -hmm. a lot of guys, especially like it doesn't really matter where level you're at. Like you train all off season and then during the season, like you can slowly lose muscle mass. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? You can lose strength unless, you know, there's a proper program in place to kind of help you maintain. I think that's super important to, once you get back to kind of realize, oh, I got pretty weak this year. Yeah. yeah. You know, and some guys I think need need to know that because it changes the way they, they train in season two because, you know, we lose that throughout a whole, you know, you're playing in the big leagues for, what, seven months, sometimes nine if you're going to the World Series or whatever it is. The potential like, for injury after that too. I yeah, mean, it's just, dude. It's, like, rockets. it's so important to build that muscle and then try to find a way to maintain it, you know, throughout throughout the year. And, you know, obviously we have things for that, but sorry, Matt, I didn't no, mean to cut fine. you off there again, but continue, please. Uh, no, I think that the hypertrophy phase actually where everybody was, it was the most unique because not everybody needed that same muscle. Like Mason came in here, he was already a tank. He, he had the Mason, muscle. It wasn't, yeah. wasn't about getting him big. He just needed a, a way to get that strength back and then almost kind of transition to his power phase a little a little mm -hmm. sooner because he just needed to move right and move quick and not saying he wasn't but he was ready had that muscle mass coming in he was one of the stronger guys and so yeah um that hypertrophy phase was definitely the most unique to everybody where we gotta see who needs who needs to actually put on a little bit of muscle who needs to get into the next phase quicker and mm -hmm. you know that next phase was the power phase i think that was important for everybody because that's where they really saw that strength that they actually built up sure um you know now they're now we're moving weights quick getting ready to you know they're starting their bullpens then so all that that muscle they kind of were able to build now we're you know we got to get moving right got to get moving fast yeah. every pitch is explosive it's ballistic you've got to be able to do that in order to throw the yeah. baseball hard or yeah. efficiently and i'll give it to these guys too like they they kept their mobility throughout you know with your guys prep plyos mm -hmm. that you guys had them going through and you know we were constantly checking i think every day bobby asked how's it feeling how's everything doing yeah so, i'm annoying when it comes to that stuff so i mean even with like them getting stronger yeah. putting on some muscle like they were still able to keep that and i think that's you know what really helped them what kind of kept them moving getting on the right track you know the final phase as everybody's getting ready to uh you know head back wherever it's going to be mm -hmm. um, or just if they're looking to get signed they wanted to be at the top so we started introducing a lot more plyometric exercises get them moving quick they're obviously not just moving in a linear position like they were with weights so or incorporating a lot of different lifts getting them more functionality to it so yeah for sure and I, there's a lot of good research out there that we've done and other people have done like how important just sprint work is and moving fast and you know if you look at some of the hardest throwers in all of baseball i guarantee they're very fast individuals yeah. Oh, yeah. you know and i think there's obviously different ways to what is it, skin a cat but you know the majority of some of the more elite guys are pretty fast movers in general good athletes mm -hmm. so. well i want to say i mean we all know paul here paul gervais with the new york mets organization now yeah. i mean when he was when he started actually taking off i want to say it was the summer of 2017 2018 uh but yeah 2018 i believe mechanically not great definitely put a lot of work into there especially getting synced up same thing timing stuff but for him like his dad told him if he was going to pay for his sessions here, like he had to buy in and do everything at home. And so like he said, almost every other day he would go outside and sprint up his hill and he would do 10 yeah. sprints every single or every other day. And again, like this is a guy that at the time was doing absolutely nothing. And as his mechanics continued to progress and get better, he was also training his body to move fast and, yeah, and yeah. be explosive. And I think along with the timing and the, the mechanics getting better, that's a huge reason why he's been able to go from 83 to topping out to 97, 98. So. Yeah, I think Paul Gervais deserves his own episode completely <laughs> tailored to him. I think he's kind of one of the OGs oh, He would here. love that. Yeah, Paul, well, <laughs> don't you worry. We're going to make that happen, brother. We're going to have you on here. And I think you, you deserve it. Probably be like his 1,000th podcast he's been on. Yeah, guys, he's are, famous that's now. That's a celebrity. So, where, so where, he, where did he start out again? So I know he was at – where did he go to before Wake Tech? So he was at Pfeiffer. He was at a three, D3. He was a D3 walk-on at Pfeiffer University. Then he went to Wake Tech? And then he went to Wake Tech. This was around the COVID year. So he played 
I would say it was a 2020 season, yeah, and then the 2021 season, they were – the coach told him that they may not have a spring. So he was there at Wake Tech during the fall, and then the coach told him they may not have a spring. So he decided to transfer to Pitt Community. Yeah, which is a really, I mean, big-time JUCO pro, uh, program, right? I yeah. mean, they, pump they pump out, guys out some guys. Down. And then all of a sudden, okay, D3 to D3 to JUCO. Oh, I'm going to be the closer at LSU now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that, I think that was so sick for him um, to make that jump. Well, he got the opportunity to go there, and then when he got there, I mean, he didn't yeah, blow he, it. What's he wasn't, I mean, he he wasn't just, like, they didn't recruit him to be like, hey, you're the closer at LSU. Like, yeah, that didn't happen. Yeah, the dude but, worked his ass off to get Yeah, he did. And he, he that earned spot. that spot, and he was, like, their best reliever. Yeah. And throwing ninety five percent fastballs, literally unicorn heaters. <laughs> um, so what's he feel? Yeah, I mean, and that this off season for him was a big time to learn how to pitch more and like mm-hmm. throw off speed and when to throw it and how yeah. to throw it. And, and that I mean, just kind of quickly on him too. Like, it helps when you're six nine and you have levers for days, but you know, for him, like you said, we were like, okay, his his slider was really just like rolling into the zone and and wasn't tight and we almost took that approach like okay your fastball is so unique and so good let's make your slider look like a fastball let's not make it as long as possible yeah let's not make it this big thing that hitters can just see and spit on like no we're gonna throw our fastball and then we're gonna throw our slider right off of it like it's almost like that degrom effect and i hate using degrom as an example because he's a unicorn he's a completely different human being than everybody but trying to tell it like take that where it's like, okay, boom, dot that four seamer down away. And I'm going to throw a 92 mile an hour slider right off of it. You know, I think that was kind of the approach we took with him and excited to see what he does. I think he could be a quick mover to that organization just based off metrics, based off, you know, traits that he has as a, as a human being and excited for Paul. But yeah, again, Paul, you deserve your own episode. We'll give that to you. Don't you worry. I guess just to finish, I'm really excited for our guys, man. Like, and what we're able to accomplish here is so unique. Not a lot of places have what we have. We have a 3D motion capture system. We have force plates, pro, you name it, we got it. Track man, and just, I think what's cool about it is we use it to get the bo- met most out of these guys, yeah. you know? And like, I think a lot of places and a lot of people like just see it and like, oh cool, you have fancy toys, but like, what do you do with it? Like, we're able to interpret the data. We're able to have our own, you know, Brandon Young, who's the founder and he's the reason why this place exists. Back in the day, he bought that 3D system with a plan, but not really a direction, I guess, if you want to call it that. And like I said, I believe in this. I'm going to make this happen. And, you know, look at us now. Uh, So, yeah. And well, you don't go $200,000 in the debt into cameras if you could see it all if you knew everything about everybody so i mean Mm -hmm. i think that's a a a big reason why we have that and how powerful that system really is is i mean you can't see the things that that thing can can see yeah i think that's why it's so easy for people to buy into you know they they come here they heard about us and then they actually get here and they're like oh wow like you guys got everything. Yeah, and it's so, it makes our job, I don't wanna say easy, cause it's not easy, but we get that information and then we build a program based off that. And that's literally the best piece of information you can get. And it takes can, out a lot of the guesswork. Oh my God, all the guesswork. And like, we can program plyos, weight room stuff, mobility, prep, recovery, all of that. Pretty much, I mean, not obviously only, but like, that's a huge part and huge component of what we do. And really unique to be able to have that. Excited for our guys, excited for the future. Um, we have a lot of cool things coming, um, especially if you aren't able to come in to BY. We're gonna, we're gonna start doing remote training for a lot of you guys that can't come in to BY. We've had a lot of requests for guys like, oh, I can't come in, I can't come in. Well, now you can without having to come in. We're gonna be able to do some remote training for you guys. I'm really excited about that. Hopefully to have that launched here in the next couple months. Uh, we've been working very hard to get that done and trying to plan it on you know, a lot of you guys, high school, college, pro, have it ready for the, you guys' off season, your in season, you, know, you name it, we got it. So excited to work with any, anyone that wants to. You boys got anything to close us out? That's it, man. Thinking about Welcome to the Young Podcast. Later, guys. Thank you.